Hello everyone and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting something very fun and very easy. So we're just going to have some fun, push around a few colors, and be creative. First let's talk about all the equipment that you get when you buy a, a J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Kit. You get a plastic apron, you get two brushes, sometimes three depending on the project, you get one paper towel, you get all the colors that you need for the project. In this case, we have Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Umber, White, Purple, Red, and Green. Now we like to provide you with a lot more paint than you'll actually need for the projects. Some of them you'll see a very, very small, meaning that we're only gonna use just touches of it to help mix a few colors to give us what we need. But we'd like to just make sure you have more than you need so that you can enhance your products on your own time or even get to a point where you can use some of these paints to paint your own project. Off to the off camera I have a cup of water which of course we don't provide but please make sure that you have it. Today I'm going to be using a couple of my own brushes for this project just to help expedite the video but please understand that the brushes we provide for you will more than competently help you to create the projects that we give you. We feel very comfortable in that. Let's take a look at the project. Today we're gonna to be painting the wine bottle. We're gonna be painting the, the background, then we're gonna be painting the glass, then we're gonna be painting the shadows, and then the wine, of course. So this is basically what the picture is gonna look like. And what we provide you with is an eight by 10 canvas with the peel already affixed. So we're just gonna be painting all the items that we need, do our peel off, and then we're gonna go on and bring the project to life. We also provide you with a spatula to help remove the peel, but we'll get to that later. Let me move all this equipment over and let's get started. Now I'm gonna be taking my flat brush and allow me to move these out of the way. I'm gonna be taking my flat brush and going right into some of the sienna. And I'm just gonna lavishly paint that all over the canvas. The thing about peel off is you make sure you paint over the peels so that when you do remove it, you have the silhouette that you want. That's one of the main focuses of our way of painting is to help provide you with a lot of the items that you don't have to struggle and paint on your own. Now, of course, later on down the road, you're gonna wanna be doing that, but for right now, let peel off just help you and focus mostly on the background and then with the interior of the bottle we'll need. So I'm just gonna splash this color. Doesn't have to be like a wall. I'm just making sure I lavishly put it everywhere. There'll be other colors mixing with it, so that's why I'm not really concerned about how it's gonna look. I just wanna make sure it's covered. So I'm just gonna take this brush. It's a nice flat brush. It's a three quarter inch flat brush that I'm using. I'm just gonna cover the entire canvas. And you see how I've painted over my peel and I just keep stroking the brush to get rid of those little brush marks. Okay, so now that we have that part of the background, why don't we take some of this burnt sienna. And we're just gonna come down in this area and put some color. And we're just gonna dance around here just to give a little bit more balance to the picture. We're going to be adding another value, covering up some of this. This is just done very quickly, very easily. Put some back here. Now the cool thing is you can, you can allow your canvas to dry completely before you apply a lot of colors, but for purposes of the video, I'm just going to keep moving on and just let it mix itself. Get rid of these brush strokes. There. Now I'm just gonna come back in with the sienna and just maybe define my background just a little bit more. Soften this up a little bit, there you go. Now the umber is gonna help start to create the shadow. So I'm gonna put like a little shadow that's casted over here. Just letting it mix with the color. Come down in this corner. I'm gonna make sure I put some right behind this bottle. 
Okay. That's good. Soften this up just a little bit. Now I'm going to take this shadow color and I'm just going to come like make like almost make a line like right across the base here. I'm just going to take and just stroke the brush maybe like that. There you go. Build this up a little bit. Now we've had a lot of fun just kind of splashing color, but soon we're going to slow this down and really start laying in the color. So I'm just going to come up on this side a little bit, build a little shadow up over here. Okay. Soften this up. Maybe right around over here there's a little bit of a shadow color. Maybe it goes a little bit like that. Okay. So I'm going to let this set up. And what I mean by set up is I'm going to let this dry. Then I'm going to come back and really add the color in. Okay, so unbeknownst to you, I paused the video for a second to allow the canvas to dry. So we're now going to pick back up on the background where we were putting in the burnt sienna because I really want to make sure that I define it. And if you notice, now that it's dried, the application is a little thicker. That's the one beautiful thing I love about acrylics is once it dries, you can you can play with it and enhance your colors and darken and enrich your colors and just have a lot more fun with them. So here I'm just going to Make the background a little darker in the areas that I want. Then softly blend upwards so that it feathers a little bit. I'm going to come maybe to this corner over here. Go up a little bit. I'm just going to softly blend this. Now what we're going to do at this point is now we're going to start painting. Because we've kind of splashed in kind of a background values and tones which I think are sufficient. And what I'm going to do is clean off my brush, call that ringing a bell, wipe, wipe it on a paper towel, and I'm going to pick up this little flat brush. I'm going to use this brush to start painting in the bottle's shadow. So I'm going to use, and you could use the pointed brush that we've given you, or you can have your own. So let's just pretend that we're going to make a shadow for the bottle. So let's just start with the basic shape. And then you got the, the neck, right, which is what I'm going to make just a little bit lower. And I'm just going to draw it straight for right now. And we're going to say that the shadow of the bottle, maybe it extends here. Fatten up the neck a little bit. I'm just showing you how to create a shadow of the bottle. Like that is good. Just trying to get the basic shape. And then, of course, it fills in. So we're just going to create a shadow that comes back into the shadow. So here's the base shadow down here. So we're just going to bring this color to about here and just kind of scrub it in. Because it could be a little bit lighter. It doesn't have to be really, really dark. But you definitely want to create a bottle shadow. Just makes it look interesting. And I'm just scrubbing it in. Just going to put a glass in front of this in a little while. There. And I like to do this little neck part up here. You see this? So I'll come here and I just come out. Come here and I come out. Just to give that and then soften it up. That's fine. Just a little shadow. That's all I'm looking for is a shadow. Take some of this and just come a little darker on this side. There. It works for me. Let it blend itself back to the base here. So now I've created my bottle shadow. Now, although there's no wine glass yet, 
I'm going to mimic a basic shape of a wine glass. So I'm going to come completely over here and say this is going to be the stem of the glass. And then over here, I'm just going to create what I'm going to call the bottom of the glass. Just to act as a, as a kind of a, a shadow to the wine glass itself that we haven't even put in yet. Let these colors blend together here. There you go. And then just take it up and say this is going to represent the glass. And that's actually good enough. I'm just going to fade that out. Let it kind of disappear into nothingness. Make sure that I get this stem part right here. This is really what I'm after. That right there is key. This is just a basic glass shape. So now that we have our background in, let's work on some of the shadows. So here's a shadow of the bottle for the bottle. It's going to come right in front of it and just creates kind of a, a shadowy shape. Just some darkness. And we know our glass is going to go here. So let's kind of scrape a little shadow color right up in here. Doesn't make sense right now, but it will later. And you could always do this afterwards, especially if you're a little bit more daring. So here. Let's go back here and add another value of darkness. More to this side. Maybe it just runs right up along here. There. It's good enough. And if you want to go back into your bottle shadow, you can. You just have as much fun. You could spend all day just creating the look that you want. I'm just trying to teach you how to paint, and I don't want the videos to run very long, so I'm not going to get into all of the little detail stuff, but there you have it. And maybe I'm just going to add just a little bit more shadow to this side of the painting, just for me. There. That's good. Clean off this. Now I'm going to show you how to create the glass. I'm going to take this little script liner brush. I'm going to go into some white, twirling it to a point, and now I'm going to kind of draw a little bit. So we know that our glass sits here, so let's just, let's just say that the top of the glass goes, let's say here. So this will be the top. I'm using white. I'm just painting with white. I'm just making the top of the glass line. Let's say it goes like that. And then let's make the bottom part. Curl it around a little bit like that. Come over here. Curl it around a little bit like that. That's a good enough shape for me. And we're going to put the base the glass right here and then we're going to make the stem make it a little bit of an angle then I'm just going to come straight down with it let it rest to the table and then I'm going to create the foot which is going to be kind of an arc so I'm just going to go like this this should create a kind of an arc shape go around a little bit and say this is going to be the bottom of my glass. So now I'm going to leave all of that open. Leave all of this open. And I'm not going to do any more to this until I put the wine in the glass. What I mean by that is I'm not going to put the streaks. But what I am going to do for the wine glass is I'm going to use white to first paint in the wine. So I'm just going to take this. And I'm just going to paint this in. I could even go back to the flat brush to be faster here. Because I just want to add some color into the glass to later 
put the wine here. So there, there's gonna be my wine. And while we paint in some of the other parts of the picture, we'll just let this set up. For the foot, what I wanna do is just add a little decoration, like a little line that goes like this, maybe a little line that goes like that. And that'll be the bottom of my wine glass. We'll come back later and add some deeper shadows to that. Now we're gonna peel off our wine bottle. So now we're gonna take our spatula. You're gonna just stick it in anywhere that you can just to get it to raise up just a little bit. Then you just wanna peel it off at a 45 degree angle. And now we have our wine bottle. Now let's break our wine bottle into parts. We know that there's a label on the bottle and we also know that there's wine in the bottle. So why don't we just take a little purple, a little red, and just mix us up a nice wine color, kind of a darkish purple color. I'm going for a kind of a red wine. But I'm gonna take this just to start indicating where things are. So let's just say that right here is gonna be the bottom of the bottle This is gonna be all wine down here. And you see that arc going this way? And then I'm gonna come over here and say there's a, a label that kind of goes right up to there. There. So now I have my label. I have my wine, but I wanna show you where my wine actually ends here in the neck, just below the neck right here. So I'm going to say that this is where the wine stops, right about there, okay? And then we also have the top part of the wine. Now there was a cork up here, but it was taken off, but there's still a kind of a little wrapping up here. So I'm going to leave this part open for the bottle and I'm going to wrap from here. Maybe I'll wrap here. And then I'll wrap here. And those are just showing you where the, the different parts of the, the wrap are going to be. So now let's take some of this same mixture, a little purple, a little red. It's going to make it kind of a grapey color. And now let's fill in some of this wine. So I'm just going to come right here and start painting in the bottom part of the wine bottle. We're going to make this much darker, but I'm just going to start painting it in because remember what I told you, you let the acrylic paint dry, you can put a lot more application to it. And besides, we want some of this lightness to show through later. We don't want it to be one solid color. It won't look as interesting. See, I told you this was easy. We're almost done. A little bit of purple, a little bit of red. And then I'm just going to fill it in. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's perfect. Now I'm just going to pull the strokes, the brush strokes, in the same general direction. There. At this point, you can raise your label up if you want, but I'm, I'm happy with it where it is. And now I'm going to put some wine up here. A little purple. A little red. Now let's fill this baby up up here. So I'm just going to take this and pull it over and stop where I made the line and fill in the rest. See? Starting to come together. Painting is a step-by-step -step process and you can spend days, weeks, months, years even Working on one painting, adding all the little details and all the little designs that you want. But we're just trying to show you how you can take this paint and peel project, create the look of a wine bottle with a glass, and go from there. There. So we have our basic start. So why don't we go ahead and start painting up here too. Let's take a little purple. 
take a little red go with a little bit more red and now I'm gonna paint up here and I am gonna just literally paint the whole thing even though I drew lines I'm gonna show you why I did that later but I'm covering everything up from here I'll probably leave this neck part up here closer to the color that I'm doing right now Whereas you're going to see the wine itself is going to get a lot darker. So I'm just going to take and just fill this all in right up here. And I'm going to separate it again later the exact same way I showed you with those lines. For right now, everything gets painted. There. I know it doesn't, it looks a little weird. But that's okay. It's okay for right now. And there. So now I have all of that. So let's clean this brush off. I noticed that my white has dried. So why don't we put some wine in the glass. A little purple. A little red. And let's fill it in. I'm going to start by leaving the half circle like that. till I see the color. Now the cool thing about this is I don't want to paint to the end. I want to leave the white line to show the glass on the outside. So you see how I did that? And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm not going to paint to the end. I'm just going to come close to it and leave that little bit of a white right there. Now should you paint over yours, you'll have to let it dry completely and then come back with the white. But I'm gonna try and not have to do that so I can just keep moving there. Now I left that purposely because I wanna start now introducing the darker values. And the darker values are primarily purple. Now watch at the bottom here. I'm gonna go to the side over here. With just purple, I'm gonna paint right over the red. And look how dark this is getting. And I'm still, that's not even the darkest yet. And the reason that I'm showing you this is because you're going to start now to set up your bottle of wine the way you want. Because you can only keep the light parts temporarily. So I'm going to take and I'm going to skip over and just kind of pull some dark color here. And maybe over here. And like so. Now some of these values are going to stay. And some of them are going to get even darker. But you see how I left some of the, some of the lighter color. And that's going to pay me dividends later. Because as it gets darker. Which it will. Then some of those light spots are going to be almost like reflective. So I'm going to come over here again to the edge. And make this a little darker. And I'm going to leave a nice gap right here where I'm just not going to paint at all that spot. I'm going to take some purple and just kind of come on this side. with it. You'll see. It's going to be great. Leave that. Now let's go back to this one. Go with just purple. And I'm just going to paint the majority of this and the reason I'm painting the majority of this is because it's the top part I want it to be lighter well I'm going darker than this trust me there that's nice clean off my brush for a second now I'm going to go back into a little bit of red a little bit of purple because I want this to be lighter. Because I want this to be the top of my wine. As you're looking at the, the picture from an angle. I want this part at the top here to be lighter. See? So now it looks like you're looking into the glass. And you're even making the shape. We're going to add some highlights to our glass. We're going to add some highlights to our wine. We're going to add some highlights up here too. But let's go back here for a second. Let's go back into this purple. And now let's add a little bit more 
down this side. Just purple. And you see how much darker it's getting? In a few moments, we're going to actually mix some black in here. Come down here again. Over here again. And just soften this up a little bit. Leaving some of those highlights. See the, the difference? Straight purple. Let's go over here. And leave that opening that I left a little while ago, that, that center spot. Let's come here. Let's go here. See that spot, I'm leaving that spot alone. See? And like I did for the wine, I'm leaving a little bit of a light spot up there. Now you can take some of this purple and Darken up your top a little bit on it, like a shadow over here. Maybe there's a shadow on this side. Maybe there's a shadow that runs along the middle here. Just leave that and we're going to come back and dance that up later. Looking good. Now I'm going to purposely take some of this umber. I'm going to mix some of that into the purple. A little umber, a little purple. And what that's going to do is give me an even darker value. See? See that darker value? And if you let this set up and dry, I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm just going to do this one little part, and then we're going to go back into our wine over here. Go right into the umber. Purple. And now let's try to fill up our glass a little bit more. Let's make it nice and dark. See that? Look how dark that's getting. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. It's pretty good. Clean this off. We're going to work on this part of the neck. Now that's where no wine is. But this is where the green comes in. We're just going to take some of the green and we're just going to kind of create a little bit of a shape in here. Like maybe that. Because this is the bottle itself. It's actually a green, a, like a kind of a light greenish bottle. But the red wine is so thick. And take some of this white and mix it in here just to start to soften it up a little bit. And then we take some of this dark mixture that we made and add some of that right along here for a shadow. Just right inside here for a little bit of a shadow. And so we're gonna leave that just like that. I actually took a moment to let this set up or dry as I call it because I don't wanna keep working wet into wet because I want you to see the darkness really, really start to show up. And there's a couple of ways you can make a dark color. You could always use the complementary colors of other colors, or you can use a dark color like an umber or black and mix it in with your color to help darken it. So for example, you could take red and green, since we are kind of done with that, and you could just mix those two together and you'll get yourself a darker mixture. You could take that color and mix it in with the purple since you've already used a complementary color and we're using red and the purple for the wine anyway and you can get yourself a darker color. And all you really want the darker color for is to try and show that the wine is rich. It's very rich in color. So here's where I'm taking it and I'm putting it right over those darker areas that I really, really, really want to have them stand out so it kind of turns into a little bit of a plum and you could also see why leaving some of those whites open helps you because then you can let it just be the highlight like as though light shining through the bottle itself and like I told you you could you could actually use black uh, with a mixture I wouldn't go straight black 
but just to, to help it. But if you could avoid using black, I would. Unless you just really, really need it for something. I would kind of make a dark color that would represent the tone of black. That's just me. I'm going to come here. I'm going to try to enrich this one up a little bit. Add a value right over this. See, just richen it up like so. See how much lighter that looks? That looks great. See if I could take some straight umber. Maybe add some of that to the side. Just to give a little darker value in a few places. I mean, you could really, really, like I said, you could... You could let this dry 45 times and add 45 different levels of color on top of the color that you already have. And the effects would be absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. But we don't have that kind of time in the videos. But again, I think you pretty much got the idea. So I can be a, a stickler for too much detail. So why don't we get into some of the, some of the highlights. So here now we have our bottle, we have our wine. Let's take our script liner brush. Let's go back into some white. And now I'm gonna show you another artistic trick. You could take your brush with the white on it and just make a line that comes for the glass and then you take it over the wine like that. And you see how it gives it a little bit of a sparkle? You could even take it and do it on the other side over here, you just take, you pull it, and you could curve it a little bit, see? And what that does, it, it almost gives some transparency to your glass, and it helps dimensionalize it a little bit. Make that one like fat. You come and make a little one that maybe goes here. Heck, and make another one that cuts right over here. Just a little one. You could put a couple of little things like this on the glass. You could even put a couple of those in the wine. Because it just kind of helps give the look that your wine bottle has some dimension and some transparency. Just clean up this edge right here a little bit. You could even take a little bit of this umber, right? And run it a little bit in your center like this. And maybe right here. And it kind of shows transparency in the stem. You can do the same with the wine bottle. Let me put a little white on it. And remember those lines I made earlier? Well, I'm going to make them here again. I'm going to make a little line that cuts the top part of the bottle up here. And maybe up here near the cork. See? They just give a little effect. And then maybe even streak a line that comes across here and maybe right down here see maybe there's a little one that's right here now let's do some on the bottle itself because there would be some glare you could take right along the edge and just take and put some white that kind of drapes like that and maybe that comes all the way down and curves under it helps create the look of the bottle. So you can even streak some lines that are here. Maybe there's a line that goes like this. Maybe there's a little one right there. Maybe there's another long one right there. Maybe there's a little bit of reflection on this side. See? Just effects. Up here, you don't even have to be as strong as you were down here. You could just put a little dot right there. And maybe there's a little curve highlight that goes like that. And there's your painting. Your painting is done. Your painting is actually finished. If you want to, you can take this one and fatten it up at the top. Maybe have it come skinny. Like that. Maybe there's another little skinny one that runs there. You can take and add... Use this flat brush for this. Some of the sienna. And maybe make over here have a little bit more darkness. You know, 
You could even come this way with it. You could do this kind of thing to it. You can darken up the shadow that represented the bottom. You could take it and just bring it this way. See? You can do that. Just to give some shadow shape to the bottom. You can go back in your backgrounds and add even a darker shadow if you like. Just to richen it up a little bit. You could do the same on the other side. And this is what I mean when I say you could spend days, hours, weeks, months, years. You could darken up your shadow up here if you want. You could darken up your glass shadow. Maybe help change that shape. Since the glass is here, maybe we'll bring this up this way. If you want, you could just darken up this area. It's your painting. Now let's get to this bottle for the final. Let's put some words. Now they, these aren't going to be real words. I'm not going to sit here and write any poetic phrase. I'm just going to come here. Maybe I'll make it kind of like a shape like this. And the rest, I'm just going to squiggle, 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 squiggle. That's going to be the name of my wine. And then to tell you what, what region it's from. Maybe there's a little squiggle, 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 squiggle. And then to just show you the history of this bottle, maybe I'm just going to write a little story with dots and dashes and some very quick up and down motions, leaving little spaces in between as if this is some long-winded conversation about the beauty of the area that this bottle was, the grapes were made or pulled from and crushed and made into this wonderful bottle of wine. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you all that in this, this little cryptic writing here. And then maybe there's a copyright down here. Maybe there's some more phrases if you want. It's your bottle. You could put your name there if you want. You could take this brush, go into a little bit of this darker value, and darken up this area in the neck. Where I told you that green was. Just to help bring it all together. And there's your finished painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun. I thought it was a really nice painting. It's not that difficult. It really isn't. It's really, really easy. And all you have to do is let your creativity and your imagination be your guide. If you still find your shadows are too light, please let your paintings dry and just add more value. Make it as dark as you want. See that? And there you have it. Well, thank you for letting me paint with you. I hope you had fun. We pushed around a few colors and we were creative. You can take this idea to as many levels as you want to. I had fun with it and I hope you did too. Until next time, please give us a like on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that when new videos come out, you'll be one of the first to get it. And again, thank you so, so much. Make sure you clean off your equipment and have a good time. Till next time, bye-bye.